welcome MES to your virtual Kerber Track field trips. Hi everybody, I'm Celine Shives and I work for the Fulton County Conservation District and today I am here at the Kerber Track. I'm really excited to be here and sharing some things with you. Uh, I'm here with a few of my friends and we are going to share some really interesting and some really important things about our streams, about our soil, about our forests. And so maybe uh, when you get all your schoolwork done, uh, you'll be able to go outside and explore in your own backyard and hopefully find some of these things. So first I want to talk about conservation because usually when I say I work at the conservation district, people have no idea what I do. So um, if we think about the root word in conservation, conserve, um, think about conserving water or conserving your energy. What are you doing when you're conserving these things? You are saving you're protecting, you're keeping, you're taking care of these things. So conservation is protecting the natural resources that all of us need to survive. So our water, our soils, our habitat, all the things that living things need to survive, right? Yeah. So that's conservation. So how can we tell if a stream is healthy? Well, one of the ways we can do that is that we can look for um, stream bugs, uh, aquatic macroinvertebrates, that's the big long scientific word for these critters, but we look for certain stream bugs that need healthy, unpolluted water in order to survive. So Blair, hand me that. So insects like this one, so this is an example of one of the stream bugs that you might find in the water and they spend part of their life cycle in the stream. So let's talk about the three main body parts of an insect. Uh, the first part is obviously the head and that's where the eyes are and the antenna are attached. Then this middle part of the body is a little tricky. Uh, it's called the thorax and that is where the legs are attached and insects always have six legs. So the head, the thorax, and then this part of the body is its belly. This is called the abdomen and uh, often they'll have tails attached to the end of their abdomen. So head, thorax, and abdomen are the three main body parts of an insect and why this is important for Scott and I is sometimes these critters look a lot alike so we need to be able to tell who's who and so to do that we look for certain features or characteristics that are found on or attached to these three main body parts so let's check out what scott found in his net Good morning students. Welcome to the Kerper Tract. I'm sorry I don't have you all down here in person to do this lesson, but we're trying to bring it to you remotely. My name is Scott Alexander. I work for the Conservation District in McConnellsburg. This is my capable nephew, Esten, and Esten's going to help me with the sampling this morning. He's a stream buff just like I am, so he finds this particularly interesting. I want to talk to you about what I do at the district is the watershed specialist, I'm a, the stream guy. I'm always thinking about making streams healthier or keeping them nice and healthy if they already are. So I need to understand the health of streams and I have several ways I test the health of a stream. One of the ways is just like a doctor might take your temperature when you're not feeling well, I take the temperature of the stream. I've already done that this morning and our water this morning is 56 degrees and that's an ideal temperature for a trout fishery. And that's one of the reasons that the Kerper Track is the best trout fishing in Fulton County. It has nice, cool water most of the year. Good trout streams have cool water in the winter and cool water in the summer. So trout can easily breathe the oxygen they have to take out of that water with their gills. 
we also can look for life in the stream. So sometimes I like to test for fish. We have fancy electrofishing equipment. We'll go up and down the stream uh, and we'll sample how many fish we find, what size are they, what type are they. That's pretty fun, very scientific, but it's also difficult. It takes a lot of people, time, money, and equipment. Uh, I can. Another thing I might do is test water chemistry. So I'll come out and take the dissolved oxygen in the water, look at the temperature, look at the nutrients I find in the stream and types of pollution. That's very effective at looking at stream quality too, but it takes time to do that and you have to do it very frequently because it's always changing. You getting all this testing? Mm -hmm. Good, pay attention. So you have to do that very often and it gets a little expensive and time consuming. My favorite way to sample the quality of the creek is what we're going to do this morning and it's called macro invertebrate sampling. Really it's a fancy name for bug sampling. So I have some basic sampling gear here, my sampling net. I have a little pan and some forceps. We're going to go into the riffly part of the stream and try to find the best spot where bugs would like to live. We're going to sample those bugs, bring them back, pick them out of our net and see what the biological life we find tells us about the quality of the water. I do this each year on several streams around the Collinsburg. So I have a long running record of what the quality of the water and the quality of the life is through the years. Are you ready to go sampling, Esty? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Come on up here. We're going to sample this here. Okay, we're in the creek now. I found a nice riffly spot I like. I think there'll be bugs there. I take my net, which is a scientific net. So you can make these at home with just a couple broomsticks and a piece of screen get at the hardware store. I'm going to put my net below these likely looking rocks. Hang right there for a second. That's some Back up this minute. I'm going to take a couple rocks and hold my net down. And then I'm going to have Esty come back behind here. I dropped off a little there, Esty, so don't fall. Come right over here hold that other one. That's good. Keep them spread apart. And Good. Now, the bugs I'm looking for, they live down in between these rocks. And a good stream, I think of it like an English muffin. It's all nooks and crannies down there. And those nooks and crannies are where the bugs like to live. If I get too much sediment and mud in my creek, it gums up all those nooks and crannies. It's like putting peanut butter on your English muffin. It covers it all up. And when I'm kicking, I'm trying to feel how stuck are my rocks. Put that up a little bit after so the water hits over the back right there. See that? And Coat Creek has a little too much sediment, I think. These rocks are not moving really easily. It might make it a little harder for bugs to live in there. So we got to look at all those things while we're sampling. But I think we'll find plenty. Way for her. Essen, you can take anything you find there, put it in that pan as fast as you can. Big, little, get as many different things as you can. Okay, so now we have our sample out of the stream, and if you, I, I hope it shows up on camera, but there are hundreds, if not thousands, of critters on our net. And most of what you see moving are insect larvae. So just as you might have a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly, our stream insects are the same. They're going to have a larval stage and they'll turn into an adult that has wings and they'll most likely, most of them are going to fly away, fly right out of the creek. Trout streams, we look for three different types of critters usually. Mayflies or stoneflies or caddisflies. All three of those are good signs of high water quality and good trout food. Most of what we find in here today are going to be mayflies. Okay, so we've got a variety of things here. Let's look at what we have. This little cup here, these are all what we'd call sulfur nymphs or mayflies. You might be able to see some of them have dark little wing pads on them. That means they're about to emerge. They're growing their wings under their skin. They will soon be adults and they'll fly off the stream by the thousands here some evening. And if you're a fly fisherman, that's the time to be here. The trout go crazy and they eat and eat and eat. And you want to be here with the exact bug that mimics that on your fly rod 
and then you might have a great night of fishing. There's some little scuds in here, amphipods swimming around. They're an indicator of limestone water, which we have here in Cove Creek. And then the other little bug in there is a megaloptera, or what you might call it, an alder fly or a fish fly or a helgramite. And it's a predator. It's looking to eat those amphipods right now. In this cup, we have a crane fly larva. That interesting critter is actually a great sign for water quality. It has to have leaves that fall off of trees and it eats those leaves when they get jammed up behind a rock and all the bacteria and fungus on that leaf. So we only find them in nice wooded streams, which means usually trout streams in Pennsylvania. And that's a tasty morsel if you're a trout. That's a big turkey dinner. This cup has several caddisflies in it. The caddisflies in this particular type, they spin a little net. They make their own tent and they live inside that tent and they pick their food right off of the net that they've made out of silk. They spin silk almost like a spider's web, but they build a little house out of it instead of a web. And down here on the end, we've got another cup of mayflies. This is a different, two different species. One are nice flat-headed mayflies. They're sort of the race car of the mayfly world. They live in nice fast water. And then the other one is called a brush-legged mayfly. And it goes down along the bottom of the creek and it sorts through the sediment with its brushy little legs and pulls its food out off the bottom of the stream. So that's just a little sample of the life in Cove Creek right now in the middle of May. It changes throughout the year. Most of these critters live about a year and then become adults. So there's always something to see and there's always something for the fish to eat. But overall, Cove Creek is a very nice trout stream, the best we have in Fulton County. And it's one of the reasons we work so hard in McConnellsburg and in the areas around McConnellsburg so that farming and our, our roads and our cities have a, don't have much of a negative effect. We want to have as little negative effect as we can on this nice stream so we can keep our trout fishery and our water quality high. Okay, so that's just a small sample of things that are living in your own backyard. And it's one of the things that got me interested in science when I was Estes age. I was, I'd like to do just what he's doing, which is walk around and flip over rocks and find critters all up and down the creek. So your homework assignment is to make sure you take your parents out and your grandparents and your brothers and sisters and help them understand that there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different types of critters living in their own backyard under all these rocks. It's like a whole world down there. And nature is like that. All sorts of different lessons to be learned, even at very tiny scale, like under the rock in the creek or uh, out when, you're, when you're out trout fishing. So helping to understand those things and appreciate those things and protect those things is really what makes conservation fun. Okay, have a great time, bye. Three, two, one.